Uh, my dudes, uh, what's happening, man? Now, if you've watched my channel, you know that I jump around to a lot of different programs. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm mostly getting comfortable with, um, well, I've used Photoshop for 20 years. I'm getting comfortable with uh, Sketchbook Pro, which I've used for about three years. And now I'm just starting to dig into Procreate on the iPad. And I wanted to do a little bit of a brief overview of these programs and why they might be appropriate for you. Um, and some of the key features and why I, I jump around to the different ones. Uh, first of all, let's start out with Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is an industry standard. If you know a concept artist, you know a guy who knows Photoshop pretty well, because <laughs> that's pretty much what almost everybody uses uh, in in house at game studios. Now, some people use Corel Painter. Some people use um, you know uh, other programs like uh, Clip Studio Paint or something. But m most pros are using Photoshop at companies like Blizzard and Riot and Capcom throughout the years that I've worked at them. There are exceptions, obviously, for different reasons. And I did want to mention that right now is a pivotal time in history where, yes, there are so many more digital art drawing tools and softwares and things. And so things are shifting. And so I'm not saying you have to work with Photoshop if you want to work at these studios, but that has been the standard for a long, long time. Are any of these major concept artists using traditional oils or paints or drawing on paper? No, not really. Unless if they're old school, in which case they're like, they were legends 20 years ago, so they're still legends because of the contributions they made years ago. Don't try to go into the business now thinking you're gonna draw on paper. I mean, it's a great way to train, but it's not going to be once you're started getting into the profession of it, you gotta go digital, man. It's just faster. But why do people use Photoshop and why uh, is it kind of the industry standard? And I think the biggest reason for it is because it's been around for so long. I mean, it works with Windows machines, and that's kind of the standard device that most companies buy. They don't supply their artists with Macs or iPads or any of that stuff. I mean, some of them are starting to now, but throughout the years, I mean, you know, this has been an industry standard for decades, and that means there's been a lot of tutorials on how to use Photoshop. Um, you know, everything down to managing layers and using uh, blending effects and creating custom brushes and using warp tools and filters. I mean, there's been so many tricks developed for digital art and digital painting that um, it's a standard for uh, a lot of those reasons as well as the customizability of it. So yeah, you can even create macros and you can create automated functions and uh, it's a very efficient tool for resizing canvases or copying and pasting elements with simple quick keys on the keyboard because as again, as I've mentioned, the standard for so long has been, you know, a keyboard and mouse or keyboard and uh, Cintiq or Wacom device. That has been pretty much the standard across most studios that I've ever worked at. Photoshop allows you to create your own custom brushes, your own custom patterns. It's really good for creating uh, wrapping textures or repeatable textures. It's really good for pixel art. It's really good for animation as well. And I've got a lot of tutorials on all those features and I covered Photoshop for a long, long time here on my channel as well. There's a lot of tricks hidden under the hood and that's like why I made the legendary Photoshop cheats. Think of it like Photoshop is the all you can eat buffet. There's a lot here and it almost covers everything, but the quality of each individual part may not be as good as other programs. And I'm gonna cover those features that I find in other programs a little bit later in this video that you can't get in Photoshop. I've used Photoshop for concept art for games for about 20 years now. And it's pretty much been like, you know, my go-to. It's like speaking a language. Now, I'm not saying that you have to use Photoshop. I mean, most of anything you're gonna use in any drawing program is gonna use a lot of similar things that Photoshop has. So working in another program while you're building up uh, your your career is not a bad idea. Specifically, uh, you know, if you're a beginner or intermediate with digital art, Sketchbook Pro is a great option. And for all you cheapskate artists out there, you're gonna really appreciate this because Photoshop costs like 10 bucks a month. And if you're not, making money doing digital art, you shouldn't be spending that kind of money un until you start making money doing digital art. And in which case, for the cheap ass, I mean discerning artist out there, uh, you're probably gonna wanna consider something that's free, such as uh, Sketchbook Pro. Now, I got into Sketchbook Pro because they sponsored me for about a year and a half, and I was really struggling with it at the beginning because I was like, well, how do I get all the things that I got from Photoshop in Sketchbook Pro? And I found that I couldn't. I had to change the way that I draw. 
but uh, it, it has some things that Photoshop does not have. Sketchbook Pro has these really creamy kind of brushes. <laughs> and uh, if you've used Sketchbook Pro, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of them are in the oily uh, brushes category of the defaults, and then you can customize them and create new ones. And I found that I really love Sketchbook Pro for sketching with a paper uh, kind of a texture and material, and then adding a lot of grainy noise or smearing and smudging using a very oily brush. Uh, and I've, I've created several custom brushes for this as well as Photoshop to get the kind of look and feel and style that you see in most of my paintings. Now Sketchbook Pro has some limitations, like for instance, it doesn't have gradient maps and uh, it does have quick keys, which is nice. And it also is on iPad. So most of what you do on the Mac or Windows device using Sketchbook Pro is, uh, is gonna be you know, available on iPad as well. But the difference is uh, between all of these is that Sketchbook Pro is entirely free now. I mean, it was for a while, I think it was uh, $20 a year or something like that. It was very cheap, but it was now it's totally free. But because it's totally free, it doesn't get any support updates. And so every time, you know, the uh, Mac or Windows does some, you know, software updates in the operating system, you know, you run the chance that it's not going to be a stable one and uh, also that it's not going to be, you know, getting any new features added to it. So they'll probably never really get around to adding that gradient map feature. Um, but it is nice because uh, for a few other reasons, I mean, uh, you know, you can use just the space bar and do a lot of quick key elements uh, such as resizing or making selections using uh, just the space bar really. And I really love the interface for it because it's very streamlined just for painting. See, Photoshop was used primarily for photo manipulation and digital artists just found ways to like paint with it, you know, and a lot of that started the whole photo bashing craze. But Sketchbook Pro, I mean, I, I like I said, I was sponsored by those guys. So they told me straight up, they built this as a painting tool from the ground up. And so it shows and the interface super slick and, and simplified, It's it's beautiful. Another point to consider is that Sketchbook Pro is totally freaking free. Like if you're on mobile or uh, on your iPad or you're on a Mac or you're on Windows, it's like it's totally free. So, you know, if you're just getting into digital art and you're like, well, I don't really know if I can get into it. I mean, you can just download this for free. And as long as you have a tablet, you're going to do all right with like at least starting to understand how layers work. And another th nice thing is like, if you're, if you're not all, if it doesn't work out, it's like you weren't all invested. It's like you went out and bought like a thousand dollars worth of equipment or something like that. And the other thing is, is uh, the interface is so easy to use. It's like you see pencils and they're going to react the way that you would expect a pencil to react, you know? So it's a very great entry level program if you're a beginner or intermediate and I'm a pro and I still go back to use it all the time. In fact, I have loads and loads and loads of tutorials. I have a whole box set of tutorials just focused on how to develop your skills in digital art with Sketchbook Pro specifically. But when it comes to advanced features, I mean, it is, it is not as deep as Photoshop. I mean, you can't do gradient map coloring uh, with Sketchbook Pro. You can't do some warping effects that you can do, um, like what you can do in, in Photoshop color balance layers and um, adding adding colors, modifying colors once they're laid down is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Unifying your image with color balance uh, effects, you'd have to flatten things, for instance. Some of the layer management stuff isn't as robust because they really only developed it for a handful of years compared to the you know 20 or 30 years that Photoshop has had. So it ends up being a great tool for sketching and blending, but not necessarily taking things to final polished level of, of rendering. Also, you can't do pixel art with Sketchbook Pro. For some weird reason, it, uh, it blends and blurs colors together, uses an auto rasterize thing. You can't switch that off, man. You can't do pixel art with Sketchbook Pro. It does have some animation support and onion skinning and things like that, but all those features are pretty limited compared to what you can do with most other programs. It's free, so you get what you pay for, you know? Now we get down to the meat and potatoes of this conversation, and what a lot of you guys are probably wondering is, how does all that stack up next to Procreate? Well, for one, Procreate is exclusive to the iPad. It's not gonna work on a Mac. It's not gonna work on Windows devices. It's only for an iPad. So if you don't have that, you're, you can't get Procreate. It might be on Android though. The second thing that you're gonna need to know about is 
procreates a flat fee of ten dollars although they do have some kind of locked off features that they're still exploring if you pay a monthly fee which i think is only a few dollars a month but um you know some things like perspective grids auto automated perspective grids and i believe they're working on some gradient map features as well and now they've got procreate a new update that's coming out i think it's procreate 5 or something like that and that's supposedly going to allow you to import your Photoshop brushes and things like that. But the biggest thing that I've been using Procreate for primarily is this kind of really papery kind of material. So of all of the brushes across all of those other things, like the smudge tool in Photoshop can't hold even a flicker of a candle uh, next to the smudging tools that you get in Procreate. I mean, it is badass, you know. I love drawing on paper. I love gouache i love working with watercolors and these are things that procreate handles absolutely incredibly well and you can't beat that price point i mean ten dollars flat rate of ten dollars compared to photoshop's ten dollars a month which is 120 a year continually it keeps going on um that's not a recurring fee with procreate so uh, i certainly like that it has a lot of the features of layers and uh, layer blending modes and things like that as well. I haven't really been digging too much into doing color with it right now. I'm working it into my workflow almost entirely as a grayscale, almost pencil sketching uh, kind of device. But that's also because the project I'm working on is, you know, a illustrated novel that really just has a lot of sketches and they're meant to be these grayscale noisy kind of it's ironic because it simulates this feeling that it's drawn on paper. And that's not something that I can easily and quickly get with any of those other uh, tools. Now, the way it stacks up is that, yes, um, the truth is, man, I'm torn. I'm, I'm totally torn to pieces on this. Like, I wish that there was a one-stop shop that was totally free, right? <laughs> that would be so ideal. But then uh, the universe would be too perfect. So unfortunately, I'm in a situation where, like, what you're watching me do in this video is, like, I rough everything out in Photoshop because I use the transform tools and warp and all that. And then I switch over to Sketchbook Pro for that oily kind of schmeeriness that gets it all creamy. That I, That's the, the style that I like, a little bit of an oily kind of a look. And then I take it into procreate for that grainy papery texture and then if i'm going to do color ironically i drop it right back into photoshop for them gradient maps ah so i'm torn man i can't i can't just focus on one program here if you're in a different position like let's say that you're like i don't know just starting to get into digital art and maybe you don't have a computer that's that robust um or you want to have a separate computer just for drawing man get yourself an ipad with procreate just get comfortable with that. Like there's a lot of pros that have just switched over entirely. If you calculate out the cost of a computer plus a Cintiq or plus a drawing tablet, like, you know, an iPad is a cheap buy because it's also a computer. You can use it for word processing and running all kinds of apps and it's a gaming system and it's just all kinds of cool stuff. And it's on the moment you flip it on, it's on, you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of advantages to just working with an iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, it's a, it, it seems pricey, but when you calculate out that it's also a camera too, and it's like there's so many different features involved in it, it's like, well, that doesn't seem like a bad direction to go. Because hey man, if the art thing doesn't work out, you can still do all kinds of other cool stuff with it. Also, a lot of artists these days are, it's, it's mostly about creating content for social media anyway. And that doesn't matter how many damn layers you use, or if you're on a Mac or a Windows device, it doesn't even matter. What matters is it a cool image? And are you, well, I don't want to go into like how to make a successful Instagram or any of that, but it doesn't matter. So those guys are like, well, hey, I, I can, you know, take the train and do my artwork for my Instagram and then just upload it as soon as I get to the office or during my lunch break or something. So an iPad might be the most optimal way for you to just start creating digital art and getting used to the concepts of layers and custom brushes and managing your filters and all the fun stuff that comes along with doing digital art. I mean, honestly, man, that's what I would do. If I were in college right now and I'm thinking I want to do digital art as a profession, uh, like, you know, it's just the best route to go because it's also something you can trade in for a pretty good price after two years and get a new one every couple of years with a minimal cost in between. You can't really like trade in an old computer for as quite as easily
easily uh, as that. And I'll tell you what, for a souped up MacBook Pro, you might end up paying $4,000. So, and then you also gotta buy a Cintiq or a tablet on top of that, which can be another 500 to a couple thousand. And that stuff gets very expensive very fast. So that iPad with Procreate seems like a darn good option for the discerning consumer that is considering this, but not entirely quite ready to take out a darn loan the cost of a car, you know, to get the proper equipment. So in summary, the Procreate is pretty much the next best step to Photoshop and it's at a much more affordable price range. And, um, and there are a lot of pros out there that are getting very high level illustrated quality using just Procreate on an iPad. And I would be remiss if I did not mention that Procreate 5 supposedly is going to support the importing of Photoshop brushes, which is massive. It's a contender, a serious contender, and with some of the new features that they're adding in uh, Procreate, like the latest update that's supposed to be coming out this month, uh, it should pretty much go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Photoshop. Um, there's only a couple of things I noticed, like I don't think that you can use quick keys with that, and quick keys can save you an awful lot of time. You know, uh, it's less uh, menus to dig through and things like that. So uh, that is one of the things that I'm really hopeful for with Procreate moving forward. I'm already integrating it into my workflow, but it's not the only program that I use, not until they get those gradient maps sorted out. So in summary, right now I use all three, but uh, you know, I, I wish I could just switch on over to Procreate. That would be pretty darn fantastic. And maybe with Procreate 5, I will. And I'll give you guys an update on that when I start to dig into that. It's supposed to come out before the end of this year. So that's it for me on this one. There's a lot of other programs, man. I'd love to, I'd love to cover Fresco. I'd love to cover Krita. I'd love to cover more on Clip Studio Paint. I know that's like the biggest contender a lot of you guys out there this whole time are cringing going when is he going to talk about clip studio paint man i got too much on my plate i'm already doing blender and programming and learning more 3d stuff so like i can i only just wanted to cover the basic top three programs that i use in my pipeline right now at least for now it looks like the brushes in procreate are gonna become very customizable so i'm really looking forward to that anyways uh dudes that's it for me on this video i don't want to go on for like two freaking hours about this stuff. So until next time, I'll catch y'all. And man, yonder, bon. And ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.